Let love explode and bring the dead to life I love so bold to see a revolution somehow Let love explode and bring the dead to life I love so bold to see a revolution somehow And I'm Melissa. And we're all going to help you circle back, back to God. Yeah, we have a great show for you tonight. First, we are going to circle back to things that we missed. Then Melissa is going to do the history on slavery. But before any of that awesome stuff, we are going to pray. I have a few things on my mind. We're going to pray for you and for everybody in this country, right? So buckle your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen. Lord, please, please watch out for anybody that is hurting in our country right now. Lord, I ask you to heal the hurt, heal the sick, and the racial issues that the, you know, the country's facing right now. Um, just give us more unity with one another like you intended, Lord. And Lord, I ask that you uh, heal the person that was carjacked in Washington last week. Heal their family. They're grieving, Lord. And all the teens, oh, the lost souls, please, please help them. There's so much violence in this world, Lord. Get us back to you. And Lord, one last thing. I ask for you to watch out for our leaders. The ones that are running this country, also send them back to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Okay. For the things that we circle, we're, we're going to circle back on um, that we missed that you guys might be interested in is that Dr. Seuss won an award for, and I think I saw it on Mulberry Street, the reward was called the Lewis Carl Shelf Award, and he won that in 1961, the year that the book was written. Okay, I just wanted to point that out, saying that he won an award for a book back then. So if it wasn't any good, why would he have won an award? Okay. Another thing is, in our Constitution that we mentioned in the last video, I did not mention that uh, it does say Creator. So I just wanted to point that out, that America was founded on God. Okay. And I think we need to bring him back. Maybe we'll have more manners. More stuff oh, yeah, like that with our would. young you know, our um, young people, you know. Our teens don't have any manners, you know. Um, another thing is that... Um, I, I promised that I would show the picture that my sister painted. It says, it's Romans 12, 21. It says, don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now we're going to move on to Melissa. She is going to do the history of slavery. Oh, yeah. All right. Usually when you think of slavery, you, you learned it all in school and... You remember President Lincoln and the mm -hmm. Emancipation Proclamation and all the slaves that you remember and Harriet Tubman, the Underground Railroad, all that good stuff. Oh, uh, uh, also Nancy Green. Oh, yes. Yep. Nancy Green. Yep. Aunt Jemima. Yes. Oh, yeah. There, There's a success story right there. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome sucks. Yes. But you don't really remember how it got started and how it came about. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take you on a little journey. And we're going to go across the sea. And we're going to tell you how it started. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to so be let's great. Get, so let's pack our bags and go on a little boat trip. And we're going to go back to 1619. And we're going to go to... Um, Africa, and we're going to join a Portuguese slave ship. Uh, I can't pronounce the name. We uh. do apologize. Yeah, we do apologize for that. 
And they would all, you know, they would uh, travel across the Atlantic Ocean, you know. They had these big cargo ships in that they would jam-pack people in. Um, men, women, children. Mm. And it was... It was terrible. A lot of people would, would you know, the people, the the people who went aboard the ship, like the captains and the people who you know did the meals and stuff like that. They all, you know, they put um, nets and stuff on the outside of the ship because they always said that the people, the slaves and people that they were taken across the sea, there was a very, very high chance of suicide. So they would put the nets on there so that the, they would keep the people in. Mm. Um, they traveled across the Atlantic filled with human cargo, captive um, Africans from Angolia, which is the southern part of uh, southwestern Africa, um, likely from the kingdom of Nagonda, uh, Congo. Um, their journey, oh my gosh, they were bound. Um, I could imagine. Oh my gosh. Filth, dirty, oh, yeah. starving. A lot of them didn't disease. eat. A lot of them didn't eat because they didn't want yeah. to eat because they were so upset. Well, they left right you know? exactly. Yeah. They left their families. They left everything behind. Mm. Um, yeah, about half the captives died. Um, yeah, they were. You know, a lot of them when they got halfway across, they were seized either by pirate ships, and then they would get there. To, they were taken to Point Comfort, which is a port near Jamestown, which is the capital of the English colony of Virginia, which the Virginia Company, if you all remember the Disney movie of Pocahontas. Oh, I love that movie. Jamestown. Yup. The Virginia Company was what John was a part of. Yep, John Smith. John yep. Smith. Mm -hmm. Yep. And John Rolfe uh, wrote Sir Edwin Sandys of the Virginia Company, August 1619, a Dutch man of war arrived in the colony and brought not, any, not anything but 20 and odd Negroes, which they called the blacks back then, yep. which the governor and Cape Merchant bought for victuals. The Africans were most likely to be put to work in tobacco fields because that was very common back then. What about um, cotton fields? Yes, that was another thing that was yes. cotton, uh, rice. Okay. So it wasn't just a no. myth, it was actually true. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, forced labor was not common. So it was like something they wanted Mm -hmm. uh, Europeans have uh, been trading goods with people across the Mediterranean for centuries. Enslavement had not been based on race. So they would, they would also have white people, you know, Hispanics. Um. Not to jump ahead, Melissa, but isn't that what we're doing on nowadays with slavery? Yes. It's not just based on one color. No. It's all across the board, right? Yes. And and we're going to be talking on that later, too, yes. about how um, slavery is still common today in some countries. Right. Yes. I'm yes. sorry. Continue. Oh, very good. Um, good point. Um, African and Europeans, they had trading goods for people across the Mediterranean for centuries. Uh, enslavement was not based on race, but the transatlantic trans slave trade, and that began early in the 15th century, and it was introduced, uh, a system of slavery, um, it was commercialized. So a lot of them switched back and forth, 
um, racialized and inherited. So a lot of people like inherit the slave trade from their fathers and their family. Um, the the people that were slaves, they didn't. Their owners didn't see them as people. They saw them as property, mm -hmm. and you know, yeah, they, it's it's so sad. When yes, I think about that. Yes, it is because they didn't see them as human beings, yeah. and that's wrong. That is very wrong. You know, because it's like they didn't. You know, they are human beings and they should be treated as human beings. Exactly. You know, exactly. nobody is more powerful than anybody else. And no. God even states that. It, he does. You know. He does. We are all God's... Children. Children, yes. yes. I couldn't think of that. That's Darn it. okay. That is okay. Um, It's kind of late, so our words are, you know... Right. Um, it's been yes. a long day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're only human. Right. And um, they, they were bought, they were sold, they were exploited. Um, Does it say um, in your research who sold them? Yes. It was, a lot of them were the per, um, Porkages. Okay. Um, they would sell them to people of the colonies. Some of them sold them to... Um, the rich mostly took them. Okay. And some of the first ones, people sold their own kind. Yep. Mm hmm That would be my son's voice that yep. you hear in the background. Got He's awesome bit, sauce, too. Got a bit scratchy because I had two ice creams. Um, the present in North America as early, they were presented in America. Present? Oh, boy. Um, in North America as early as the 1500s. Um... The sale, the sale of 20 and odd African Americas, they sent the course that would become slavery in the United States. Um, 15th century, the Roman Catholic Church divided the world in half. Um, Portugal, a monopoly um, on trade in the West Africa and Spain. Um, so the Roman Catholic gave Spain and Portugal um, the right to colonize the new world in quest for land and gold. So they wanted them to travel the world and see if they could find new land and um, to, col to colonize. It's kind of scary back then. You don't, right. When you think about travel, you're thinking comfortable airplane. You're right. thinking of a nice cruise ship. Exactly. Back then, traveling, oh my goodness. You're on yeah. a ship for months at a time. Exactly. Yeah, and those waves. Sick on those ships. Yes, they exactly. Did. Yes, they did. Seasick. A lot of deaths. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Pope sure Nicholas. The chicken pox originated probably from, I know it was some disease from a ship. Um, Pope Nicholas V, um, Boyd Porkage's, um, effects and issued the Romanus. Uh, Pontifex of 1455, which affirmed Portugal, Portugal's exclusive right to terror um, territories. It claimed mm -hmm. the West African coast and the trade from those areas. Um, it granted the right to invade um, the West African coast and take the people and um, put them in slavery. Uh, the queen in that area, her name was Queen um, Isabella. Um, she, oh, no, not the queen of that area. My bad. Queen Isabella invested um, in Christopher Columbus's exploration and increased her wealth and ultimately rejected the enslavement of um, Indians. Mm -hmm claiming that they were Spanish subjects. So they belonged to Spain, the Indians did, according to her. Um, Spain established an assento or contract that authorized the direct shipment of captive of Africans to trade as human commodities in the Spanish colonies in the Americas. So the, so the Europeans... Um, Eventually, the Europeans and the nation states and the Netherlands, France, Denmark, and mm -hmm. England, seeking similar economic and geopolitical powers, joined the trade. They exchanged good and people with leaders along the West African coast. So, it's 
So they were kind of, you know, like trading everything. Yeah, and when you think about trading people, I know that is so. No. Oh. Yeah, it's like, hey, uh, my son's getting on my nerves today. I'll trade you him for, um, let's see, a head of cattle. Right. Exactly. You know, he can. I he can work offended. for you. I am so sorry you feel offended. But so yeah. That's yeah. Just, if you think about it that way, I had to give a little example. It is right. so sad. Human beings are not property. Exactly. They have feelings. They have thoughts. Exactly. No matter what color, no matter how old, no matter where they come from, I don't even care if they're criminals, they still have feelings and thoughts. Exactly. And they still should be respected. Exactly. And Now, if you're a criminal, yeah, your rights get taken away. But you did a crime. But it's still, you shouldn't have what they say in the Constitution. Um... No cruel and unusual punishment, you know. Exactly. Because they're still humans. Exactly. And that's what slaves were. They were humans. And they were getting unusual punishment. Exactly. No. And this woman, she was a leader in West Africa. And she was the queen there because her brother had died. And she took over, and she actually, she ran away to hide because they were going to kill her. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, um, it was Queen Najinga. Um, I like that name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in 1624, her brother died. So she took over the, the Nagando, which is present today, um, Angolia. And Portugal was trying to colonize that area. So she, um, they were trying to get the slave trade and she ruled there. And she was trying to flee the attack. Um, she fought for her country, her, her area. And, you know, and then she made shelter for her, for the um, runaways. She provided shelter for them. And uh, by her death in 1663, she had made peace with Portugal and Matumba and traded with it on equal economical uh, footing. And in 2002, there's a statue of her. Um, Where's the statue located, does it say? Yeah, it's in Luganda. Okay. The capital of Angolia, where okay. she is held up as an emblem of resistance and courage. Okay. Uh, may I stop you for a minute? Sure. And I would like to... Um, I, need a long history. I would like to go over the statues. Um, if you've been watching the news, there are statues um, today. or There were statues that were removed uh, this last summer in 2020 because of the George Floyd incident. Um, and it really does sadden me because, um, as a quote from Rafiki, if you guys ever seen The Lion King, okay, this quote is really good. He says, the past can hurt, but the way I see it, you can either run from it or you can learn from it, okay? And the statues that were removed, there was 30 three Christopher Columbus statues removed because he was part of the slave trade. They thought, you know, he was... And I, I think, you know, for one, he just, he was one of the people that discovered America. Right. That's our history being removed. You right. You know? Um, it's sad. And if you take away our history, it's doomed to repeat itself. Exactly. You know? Um, and... Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. And actually, he found, he found America by accident. Yes, he did. He, he wasn't... He wasn't... He called the people Indians because he thought it was India. Exactly. Exactly. I homeschool him, so. Uh, let's see. Another statue that was removed um, was the John C. Calhoun uh, statue. He was a politician, right? And he owned his slave. Like all politicians back in that day. Right. They it all was, owned. It was normal back it was, then. Yeah, it was. And one of it, the, um, he was removed because he actually wanted slavery to continue. But... It, as the way I see it, and this sounds bad, but as the way I see it, he, it was a normal thing. Right. He wanted to continue it because he liked the work around the house. I'm not entirely sure how he treated his slaves. Right. I'm pretty sure he was a good slave owner. I'm not really sure. But, um... He 
Even Abe had slaves. Even Abraham Lincoln had slaves, exactly. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Before cotton was um, dominated, American agriculture, sugar drove the slave trade. So sugar was more uh, the... Prominent? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, throughout the Caribbean and the Spanish Americas, sugar cane was was known as a brutal crop because they had it required constant work six days a week. Oh. Whoa, could you imagine that? Oh my gosh, no. I, <sighs> I'm, I'm glad for the farmers we have and the equipment they have. Oh yes, I am most so, definitely. They do we take, awesome. We take so many things here for granted. Oh now. yes, we do. Yeah. Most do. definitely. Yeah. Uh, they, a lot of people got maimed doing oh, the sugar cane. I bet. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. They got burned and a lot of them got killed doing that. The lifespan of an enslaved person on sugar plantation was little of seven years. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yep. So they would always have people coming, you know. It was just like buying doing, new people. Right, exactly. Oh my you know how like they have those for people at like um, Taco Bell and stuff. They yeah. have those always getting new people coming in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was something like that. They had a high turnover is what high they call it. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. By ensuring new enslaved people would arrive on a regular basis to replace the dying people. Oh, it's terrible. It is. You know, it's like, oh, pff, who cares about them? We'll just get someone new. Oh. You know, it's like, have a heart. It is, yeah. These people worked their butts off so you can have money, you know. So you become wealthy. Right, exactly. On somebody else's expense. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. It's like, oh my goodness. It's like, oh. Just so that you could have. Yeah. And when was, I mean, it was what, 18 something that uh, slavery was abolished by, you know, the Civil War and President Abraham Lincoln, and you know he did a good thing. For it was on New Year's. New Year. Yeah, that's right. It was, wasn't mm-hmm. it? And you know, when I was in high school, there was one um, person that I remember that was um, a slave, and I remember her name because I associated it with it was Harriet Tubman. Oh yes. And I remember her name because you can't. I always said to myself, you can't fit a um, submarine in a tub basically she helped the underground railroad yes and i don't know for some reason in high school i still remember that analogy mm-hmm. that i did and um i, I i'm uh, i'm thrilled with some of the slaves that like we said before nancy green yes she turned her life around then there was um mr washington oh what's his first name um oh my goodness i've couldn't remember. Yeah, he was a slave mm-hmm. and became something. He was a sci- he loved science and became oh, yes. you know like that. And then um you know Harriet Tubman and Rosa Parks. Oh my gosh, yes. yes. So what I have to say with all your facts and everything is just because they were enslaved people didn't mean their life was over. Exactly. They made something of themselves. Exactly. And I believe wholeheartedly that our country needs to focus on the good and not the bad. Exactly. There might have been a lot of statues removed. There might have been a lot of turmoil with the African American community. But you got to look at the positive with that. Exactly. You know, um there was a lot of Confederate slaves that were removed too, but we don't still have slavery today. It's mm-hmm. gone. well we don't have that kind of slavery. Exactly. It's the slavery we have here in America is illegal. Right. There is no legal slaves here in America. <clears throat> okay. And I am so tired of hearing people say, well, because of this slavery, this you were not alive when slavery was happened. Exactly. We did not own slaves. Mm-hmm. You know, and I just I care about people so much, and I, I love everybody. Okay? Me too. Anybody that meets me knows that I love everybody. I just mm-hmm. want to hug everybody. And me I too. want information to get out there about slavery, how harsh it was. Oh, yeah. And I am glad we don't have it here now. Um, 
Melissa does have a list of where slavery is right now. Yes. Uh, if you want to do that right now with a list of... Yes. Um, that, oh, she read this to me earlier. It is amazing. The countries that have slavery in 2020, India is the largest number of slaves globally. And I said that wrong. Hello. With 8 million, followed by China with... 3.86 million. Oh Pakistan, 3.19 million. Oh my gosh. North Korea with 2.64 million. Oh. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Nigeria, 1.39 million. Iran with 1.29 million. Oh my goodness. Indonesia with 1.22 million. Oh. Democratic Republic of Congo, which is in Africa, mm -hmm. with 1 million. Russia with 79, 7,000. 7, oh, I'm too tired. Yeah, I know. 7,900. Yeah, I can't even read it. 7,900. Woo! 7,900, yeah, seven. Man. Woo! <laughs> there she goes. I'll be back. <laughs> I'm raising three kids. We're tired. Okay, so Russia is 79 for. <laughs> I'm doing it to you, dear. <laughs> okay, let's slow this down. 794,000. Bingo. And the Philippines, 7,800, oh, yeah, here you go, take it. <laughs> 784,000. I should homeschool her too. Yeah, I went to night school. What is nighttime? I don't know. Maybe she go. she went to day school. Yeah, that's it. Excuse her, she went to day school. Um, let's see, what about, did you have one on the US? There was one on, um. um those are the ones in 2020. Those are the ones that are in the other countries that are. Oh, okay. Those are the, those are the ones that are legal. Okay, the, okay. So, like she just said, these ones right here, people, are the legal slaves. U.S. does not have legal slaves. No. We have illegal slaves here, and she does have information on that for our ne next segment we're going to be doing on um, human tra trafficking. Yes. And other um, sorts of that stuff in uh, America today. Yes. Um, now, just so you guys know, there was slavery back in the biblical time, too. If you all remember Genesis, Joseph was a slave. He was sold by his brothers. And I'm going to read this little bit to you guys from the Bible. This is right before Genesis 37. And it says, uh, right here, it says, Joseph... One of Jacob's 12 sons was obviously the favorite, hated by his brothers for this. Joseph, Joseph was sold to slave, uh, slave traders only to emerge as ruler of all Egypt. Through Joseph, we can learn how suffering, or sorry, we learn how suffering, no matter how unfair, um, develop strong character and deep wisdom. Okay. So even Joseph from biblical times made something out of his slavery. He became something. And that's what we're trying to uh, come across. Right. Even though you might be going through something very difficult right now, there is a way out. There's something to become of it. And God is with you every step of the exactly. way. Exactly. Pray. Talk to somebody. If you're having a hard day, call your mom. Call your dad. Call a friend. Call but a don't neighbor. Don't call the Ghostbusters. Yeah, don't call the ghost. Well, what if they have ghosts? Then call them. Yeah, there we go. See, it's like, and I always say, it's always great to make jokes out of everything because it lightens your heart. Mm -hmm. Just because it's a serious topic doesn't mean you can't have humor for it exactly you know um but like we've been saying you know spread love not hate that's our motto and with the slavery issue we bring this up 
because of all the racial issues going on right now in America, where they're trying to divide the um, Asians, the blacks, the whites, the Mexicans, everybody's hating everybody else. And I don't care what anybody else says. It's what's on the inside that matters, not the outside. Okay? Amen. You should love somebody for how they treat you, how they treat others. You know, if somebody's having a bad day, just give them a smile. Give them something. Help them. Exactly. You know? And that's why we bring up the slavery issue because mm-hmm. of all the race hate right now. I oh, don't yeah. care what anybody looks like. Everybody deserves a chance. Everybody deserve, deserves love. Exactly. And I think Melissa has um, a couple of verses she would like to uh, read as well. Yes. Exodus 2.23. Now let me find it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> During those many days, the king of Egypt died and the people of Israel groaned because of their slavery and cried out for help. Their cry for rescue from slavery came up to God. And God delivered them out of Egypt. Yeah. He knew they were in trouble and that they were not in a good place. And he delivered them. He sent Moses. Yes, he did. Yes. And Moses had a stuttering problem. Yep. So he he was afraid to talk in front of people. Exactly. So they used his brother Aaron to talk for Moses. Yep. And then we go to Matthew 27 and 28. And whoever would be first among you must be your slave, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life for a ransom for many. Yes, and I I, I totally agree with that. We are not here to be served we are here to serve. Be the hands and the feet of the world. You know, we're talking a lot about love, but we're also going to be doing things. Um, each Friday, you're going to see us do a special project for somebody else. Uh, this Friday's video, we're making cards for veterans' hospitals. Yes. We are going to deliver it so we can give them hope and show them that we still care for them. Exactly. They served our country. They are helping us stay free. And I don't care, you know, what war they served in. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care what color they are. They deserve love, too. So this Friday, you'll see us just sitting around, making cards for them, having a conversation about topics that are on our mind. Exactly. Um, Any other last thoughts, Melissa? Nope. It's time for us to hit the bed. (laughs) Exactly. I'm ready to. (laughs) Yep. She's going to go home with her husband, and I'm going to go to sleep because I have another long day tomorrow. So you guys enjoy um, the rest of the week. We will see you Friday for another wonderful video. Bye. Bye. Now is the time to make real the promises of democracy. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quick sands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time to make a reality for all of God's children. Let us not seek to satisfy our thoughts of freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. So even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. This will be the day when all of God's children will be able to sing with new meaning. My country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing, land where my fathers died, land of pilgrim's pride, from every mountain side.
that freedom win. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, everyone, we going to help. It's totally fine. <laughs>